Praise God. I'm just delighted. Turn me down just a little bit. I got a little bit of echo behind me. That's, that's better. Amen. Uh, thank you for all of you that are here this morning, and thank you for uh, following Jesus. Amen. I mean, you know, I don't know that there's anything better to do than follow Jesus. That's the only thing I've found in my life that has been worthwhile. And I trust that you're there as well. It is, it's a great honor to teach a group of people that are hungry and uh, also studious. Because I don't want you to just be hungry. I want you to be studious. And I don't want you to just be studious. I want you to be active. Amen? Amen. Because you have to be a, not just a hearer of the word, but a doer also. Say amen to that. Amen. And so in your being a doer of the word, that's where we find success. Christianity as a religion is very poor. Um, it's, it's very poor. It's, it's, it's not very fulfilling as a religion. As a lifestyle, it's worth it. And so it is a lifestyle that we approach this morning as we come before God um, and let him know how much we love him. Amen. Uh, just by way of opportunity this evening, we will have a service here at 5 o'clock. Um, I would invite you to take your stuff with you. Don't leave your stuff behind. But the, the crew is going to leave their stuff set up tonight. And we have a guest speaker. Um, uh, I'm not going to be speaking tonight. Don't wear a suit. Don't wear a tie. Just come, you know, whatever, whatever makes you comfortable coming at. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to have jeans on myself personally. But, uh, yeah, you might be the first time you ever see me in jeans. But, anyway. <laughs> But it's okay. <clears throat> uh, but uh, my brother, Apostle Walter Roberts, I call him Bishop Roberts, will be here. Matter of fact, he should be getting on a plane, or he may already be on a plane on his way back here. He's going to be speaking tonight. We're going to have praise and worship. That is unconventional. <clears throat> unconventional praise and worship. Uh, but that's what the Lord told us to do, and that's what we are going to do. Amen? We're going to follow his leading. I invite your careful consideration this morning. I am, I am ready for bear. I'm loaded. Uh, as the Lord has filled me up, thank God for his grace and mercy. Um, one of the challenges for anybody, we will have a well, ordination service here uh, in about a month. We're in September now, amen? September the 2nd, is that correct? Uh, October, November. So in November, we will have an ordination service. It will be on a Sunday morning. Uh, I've got some folks coming in uh, who will help me, assist me with that. Uh, but we've got some ministerial candidates who have been faithful to the call and the charge of the Lord on their lives. And as such, they are ready to help take this ministry to the next level. It can be a very taxing thing when the ministry is all about one person or two persons. And it's not intentional. It just happens that way. Amen. So, uh, but the Lord has instructed us to lay hands on people to bring them to a place of fulfillment and calling in their ministry. And that's what we're going to do. So I invite you, there will be more information regarding that. That will be coming in November. Excited about that. Men of Honor coming up at my home in, in the second uh, Saturday of October. Praise God. Next week, uh, my wife and I will be traveling. We'll be leaving the uh, latter part of the week, and we'll be gone. We'll be here next Sunday. Uh, we have a guest speaker next Sunday. Please come. <laughs> I don't typically tell people when I'm not going to be here because, you know, folks like, uh, you know, uh, you know, some people didn't even need that occasion today. But anyway, I'm just saying. Uh, but it's a, it's a holiday week and I get that. Amen. I'm just having fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, we'll be going to the IFC International Faith Conference in Chicago, Illinois, uh, with Dr. Bill Winston and Tudor Bismarck. Oh, my goodness. If you've never heard Dr. Bismarck, oh, what, a, what a powerful man of prayer. Kenneth Copeland, you know. Um, I love seeing these generals of the faith in person because it inspires my faith. Amen. 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 Keeps me moving in the right direction. Amen. 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 Samuel Rodriguez. Anybody ever heard of Samuel Rodriguez? I got one person back there. That is a man that is lit from one end to the other. <laughs> he starts out lit and he ends lit. That man preaches and uh, tremendous uh, anointed vessel of God, many others. We're delighted for that. Song performers, you know, Fred Hammond and, and Donald Lawrence and other ones that you may, may or may not know, but we're delighted. So my wife and I will be going, and that will be a time of refreshing for us, so we're looking forward to that. 
uh, as God allows us to do that. Amen. So we're glad you're here. I want to take an opportunity to greet our YouTube audience. Thank you so much for tuning in. You may be watching this uh, after the fact. You may be watching it live stream. Whatever the case, we're delighted that you have joined us this morning. I pray that you would be open and receptive to the leading of the Holy Spirit this morning. Everything we do is led by the Holy Spirit. That's our endeavor to yield ourselves or to just allow God to use us. It may not be flattering to the flesh or to us, but it is a purpose that the, that the Lord has for us. So please, thank you for tuning in. Please get something to write with. Get a cup of coffee, a warm blanket, whatever it is that you need. Sit back and listen to the word of God. Receive that by faith and watch God change your life. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome our YouTube audience today? Amen. Amen. So I don't see any first time guests, so I welcome them, but I don't see any today. Would you turn with me to Galatians 2 and verse 20? Galatians 2 and verse 20. Praise God. I'm going to expeditiously move through the word of God this morning. Delighted again that you're here. We need to hear the word of God. Amen. It is the word of God that changes us. It is not our church attendance. It is not our prayers. It is not our giving. It is not simply our good works. It is the word of God that changes us from the inside out. Can you say amen to that? If you have Galatians 2, amen. Verse 20. Hallelujah. When you have it, say amen. The Apostle Paul writes here, he says, and I'm reading from the expanded Bible, I was put to death on the cross. I was put to death on the cross. Your version might say, I've been crucified with Christ. Does anybody say that? Amen. And so he goes on to say, with Christ, and I do not live anymore. It is Christ who lives in me. I still live in my body. Say, I still, I still. live in Brilliant. my body. But he says, but I live by faith in the Son of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to save me. How many saved people we have this morning? Amen. Amen. Don't ever take your salvation for granted, please. I know it's a tough time. I know it's a day, a day and age when salvation is not very not celebrated, so to speak. But understand that it is Christ who has saved us and not we ourselves. Amen. So I read that because I want you to understand that you are dead men and women walking. You are. You are. Whether you know it or not, whether you feel it or not, you are dead men or dead people walking. Uh, death, the connotation of death, <coughs> excuse me, many times when we talk about death, the connotation of death uh, as faith people, we don't like to talk about it because we feel like we're saying something wrong. But can I tell you that reality is that you will never know death. Amen. We only got a few of us here today, so I would appreciate your response. That would help me get through this a little bit quicker. <laughs> Welcome Kelsey back. He's been gone. He's been in Europe. Amen. How about that? He's been in Europe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hey, bloke. Anyway, you will never know death. No matter what you experience in your lifetime, death will not be one of those things. So don't fear it. But rather, the, the, the cessation of life in this physical body is inevitability for all of us, except we be translated by the, the rapture, as it were, uh, the catching away of the church. We'll, we will then recognize that we'll just go from this existence to the next. But should we go by way of the grave, we will mourn you, <laughs> but you will rejoice in him. Yes. Amen. So, so when I use this word today, I want to make sure, because I'm going to use it here in a little bit, I want you to make sure that don't be afraid. You know, our job, our assignment as a church is to make people ready to meet the Lord. How many of you ready to meet the Lord today? Yes. Should he call you home? Should he call you home? Are you ready? That's the ultimate question. There is no other question. There is nothing more important than that question this morning. I feel like preaching this morning. There's nothing more important than that reality. Ultimately, if I leave, if I check out, if something should happen that this heart stops beating and this blood stops pumping, I am ready to be with him. Amen? Amen. Say, I'm ready. Turn with me to 2 Timothy 3 and 1 real quick, if you would, please. 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Gentlemen, I know this isn't in your notes. Whoever's back there, I know it. So thank God. I'm so thankful for our helps ministry. Would you give our helps ministry a great big round of applause? Amen. Amen. Media ministry. What a blessing. We couldn't do this without them. It's getting better and better every day. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, if you have it, say amen. 
I hear pages turning. I'll wait just a moment. <laughs> Verse 1 from the Expanded Bible. Remember, say remember. He says, remember, King James says, this know also. Remember this, in the last days there will be many troubles because people will love themselves, love money, brag or boast, and be proud or arrogant. They will say evil things against others. They will speak abusively or blaspheme and will not obey their parents or be thankful or be the kind of people that God wants, holy and pious. Verse 3 says they will not love others, will refuse to forgive or reconcile. They will gossip, slander, and will not control themselves. They will be cruel, brutal, my God, will hate, not love what is good, will turn, verse 4, will turn against their friends and be treacherous traitors and will do foolish things without thinking, be reckless. They will be conceited, will love pleasure instead of God, and they will act as if they serve God. Hmm. The Bible says having a form, King James says, of godliness. What does the rest of it say? But denying the power thereof. But they will not have, this says, but will not have his glory, hmm. his power. Amen? So you got that, right? So, so there is a form, there is a shape that comes to people that looks like they are serving God. And ultimately, we are not the ones who judge their character, but we do have the ability to judge. People say, well, you shouldn't judge me, but there is the right to judge in the body of Christ. And what I'm judging is not based on your performance, but rather I'm judging your what? Fruit. Say that with me, fruit. I'm looking for the fruit of righteousness that comes from people who serve the Lord unashamedly, unreservedly, who have died, say died, and they've allowed God to use them in ways that simply um, really don't work in a natural world setting. So with that, what am I looking for? I'm looking for your fruit to show up. What is Jesus looking for? Your fruit to show up. What does that mean? That means that when I go out as a representative of the Lord, no matter where I'm at, I'm still in Christ. We just read that over in Galatians, isn't that right? I'm still in Christ. So being in Christ is not for Sundays. Amen. Being in Christ is not just for um, when it's convenient. Amen. Most of the time, being in Christ is not convenient, especially in the 21st century. That's why I read that from, from, from 2 Timothy for you, because ultimately, there are many people who say that I love Christ or I love Jesus or I'm born again, but the fruit is not there for us to examine in their lives. Come on now. Are you here? Are you hearing me this morning? Okay, so let's keep going. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 4. A few scriptures here, you'll be all right. This is more Bible than some of you have read all week. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's okay. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 10. When you find it, say amen. amen. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 10. I say to all my fellow ministers out here, be flexible to whatever the Lord tells you to do. Amen. Don't be so bent on what your agenda is or what you think. Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 10. You have it? All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's keep going. So here we see, and I'm going to start at verse 9. We are persecuted. This is the Apostle Paul once again writing to the church at Corinth. We are persecuted, but God does not leave us. Amen. We are hurt. Sometimes, but we are not destroyed. Amen. Verse 10. We always, say always, always, carry the death of Jesus in our bodies. Look at me, please. You carry the death of a crucified Savior in your bodies. The necessity for that goes well beyond what your understanding of it is right now. In other words, what I recognize is that I walk and talk and live and breathe, but in me resides the glory of God. In me resides the power of God. Whether I feel like it, whether I understand it, whether I believe it or not, when I show up, God shows up. When I go to the mall, God is at the mall. 
When I go to the hospital, God is at the hospital. When I go to work, God is at my job. Come on, somebody. No matter where I go, when I'm at home, when I'm resting on my chase lounger or in my lazy boy, whatever the case is, God is resting with me. Hear me well this morning. Why is that necessary to understand? Because the apostle writes here, he says, we are hurt sometimes, but we are not destroyed. Verse 10, we, are all, we always carry the death of Jesus in our own bodies. Why? So that the life of Jesus can also be seen in our bodies. I am concerned always, but I'm concerned when we forget who we are and who we represent. It's easier to do in this society probably better than any age that we've ever lived in. Because the distractions of the age keep us to a place where, where you know, we have to be mindful. We have to be intentional. Not that we haven't always had to be that way, but we have to be intentional and deliberate about who God is and what he wants to do through us. Can you say amen to that? I gave everybody, I asked them this morning to give everybody, this is the only seed we could find on short notice. I've got mine up here somewhere. Did you get a little yes. kernel of popcorn? Yes. Everybody got one? Yes. Would you hold it up this morning for me, please? I know it's like, see, and it's even hard to hold on to, ain't it? Yes. Isn't it? It's so small. I was trying to find a mustard seed. A mustard seed is much smaller than this. But if you have it, <laughs> just lift it up for me. I want to see it. I want to make sure everybody's got one. Now, <laughs> somebody said it's growing. You're getting ahead of me. Amen. Put it in the palm of your hand and just look at it for a second. Doesn't look like much, does it? Not really. From the outside, it doesn't look like much. Right? You know if you put some heat and some butter on this thing, what's it going to do? Pop. Pop, 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 pop. Pop, pop, it's go, yeah, and then it, then it'd be ready to eat, isn't that right? Yes. Throw a little salt on that joker and it'd be something special. But, but with that, this is representative. I'm just using this today as an illustration. I want you to lose it. I want you to hold on to it because I'll probably pull it out again. This is what we look like in the hands of a living God. This is what I want you to see this morning. That you and I, as represented, as small, look how, look how big, small that thing is in your big old hand. You could take it and throw it. You could take it and crush it. You could put some pressure on it. Mm, we're going to get to that in a minute. We could put some heat on it, some cold on it. We could do whatever we, we could swallow it. You can do whatever you want to do with this. But ultimately, what's inside of this cannot be released until the right elements come across its path. Now, you can put that aside for right now. I want you to look at yourself as being that seed. I'm here to tell you this morning that What's in you cannot be released until the right elements hit your life. And God's design and plan and desire for you is that the right elements would hit your life. He puts you, he gets you born again. Born again is a great experience, amen. But being born again is not enough. You can't just be born again and stop right there. We talked about that extensively. I'm not going to go into that this morning. But as you are born again, what begins to happen is transitionally, you start living your life now under the auspices of a living God and a heavenly Savior who now directs by the power of the Holy Ghost your path to be able to face every day. And he does not exempt you from trials and tribulations. Because it is in the midst of going through something that your faith or your genuineness is proven. This seed that we have means nothing. The one I just showed you that you have. The only way to get the best out of that seed is to put what on it? Dirt. Heat. <laughs> he said dirt. I'll take that too. But you put heat on that because it is a popcorn kernel, you're going to get something popping on. You're going to get something, right? So what God does is he doesn't exempt us from the heat or the, the, the challenges of life. Rather, he says that in this woman of God, in this man of God, is my power. So when I allow them to go through a, temp, a test or trial, I'm not tempting them, but when I allow them to go through it at the hands of my enemy, I have an expectation of what they're going to look like on the other side. Amen. Mm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Let's, let's, let's jump off into this because I want to get to a certain place today. 
I talked to you last week about being replanted. So we talked about that. We read from Genesis 17. I'm not going to go there again. Genesis 17, verse 1. Uh, we read from that, and, and the directive of the Lord was that they would be exceedingly fruitful and multiply. And that was to Abraham. Say amen to that. Also, we talked from Galatians 3 last week. If you belong to Christ, you're in, in him, you are Abraham's, say, seed. OK, there's only one seed. There's not many seeds. There's not plural stuff. We talked about that as well. I gave you a scripture. You can write this down from Hebrews six. We talked about uh, therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. And we talked about that in the context that these things we don't necessarily preach at this church. This church is, a, is, is unique in that uh, I allow God to take us to places that we normally probably wouldn't get to at your quote unquote average church. And, and, and many times that be, can be a struggle for people because they've come in and they feel if they're not in a the, in the place spiritually, they might feel condemned. But the Bible says in Romans 8 and 1 that there is therefore now no condemnation to them that walk not after the flesh. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, we have to know who we are in Christ. And so we push beyond some of these things that are listed there in Hebrews 6, beginning at verse 1. We talked also from Genesis 12 and 2, where the Bible speaks to Abraham. God speaks to Abraham. And he, from the Amplified Bible, he says, I will make of you a great nation. Did he do it? Yes. And he says, I will bless you. Did he do it? Yes. He says, I will bless you with abundant increase of favors. Did he do it? Yes. Amen. He says, I will make your name famous. Anybody in here not know who Abraham was? You can poll. You can take a poll anywhere across the world. They will know who Abraham is. Did God do what he said he would do? All right. He says he goes on to say and distinguish and you will be a blessing dispensing good to others. Did Abraham do that? Say amen to that. It is the blessing of Abraham that each one of us now sits under today as being born again. Amen. amen? amen. So turn to first Corinthians three for me, if you would, please, real quick. First Corinthians three. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Where's Miss Brown? Did we give out our, did we give out our, okay, all right. I asked her to do something for me this morning that, praise God. <laughs> well, I was listening to some old time music this morning, shouting. I got my shouting before I came here, so you might want to do that sometimes yourself. Amen. Don't wait here to, to shout, right? Shouldn't wait till you get here to dance. I ain't waiting on no music. No, right, don't get me started. I'm, I'm already started this morning. You can't get me started. I'm already started. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to finish too. Glory to God. First Corinthians 3, verse 6, if you have a say, amen. amen. I planted the seed. Who's writing? Somebody tell me. Paul. Paul, the apostle Paul. What was the apostle Paul before he became an apostle? A murderer. Right. A liar. He was very religious, ultra religious, sat at the feet of one one teacher by the name of Gamaliel, who was actually the foremost teacher. He was a son of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, the Bible he called himself. In other words, he was so remember we talked last week about being zealous. You have to go back and look and remember he was zealous towards God, but with ignorance. Come on, somebody. And so this man now writes, he says, I planted the seed and Apollos watered it. Apollos. The Bible describes the, the Apollos as one who was eloquent or well gifted, well structured in the scriptures. Apollos could stand and preach to you and have you in awe. Your mouth would be open and your eyes would be alert. He would captivate your attention. I feel like preaching this morning. He would captivate your attention and cause you to say, "Ooh, I never heard that before. I didn't know that about God. This is Apollos we're talking about. Somebody who had the ability and the charisma and the giftedness and the anointing of the Holy Ghost on his life. And the Apostle Paul talks about him and says, I planted. Apollos did nothing more than just water. There's so much in you and I that all we're doing this morning is watering who you are. <laughs> you have already been planted by the streams of living water. You are a tree of righteousness. Glory to God. Huh? Your roots go very deep. <laughs> and in that deepness, the water of God's presence flows. The Bible says in Luke 7, he says, he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his or her belly shall flow what? Rivers. 
of living water, water that will simply nurture and fur, uh, furnish you with good things. I, I'm furnishing right now. Mandy's furnishing me. My wife, Lynette, is, Pastor Lynette, is furnishing me right now. She's not even saying anything. But her living waters, I can sense it and I can feel it. Are you hearing me this morning? That's how the Apostle Paul writes. He writes that and says that I planted the seed and Apollos watered it. What seed is he talking about? The word of God. Isn't that right? But God, say but God, is the one who made it grow. God is making you and I grow this morning. Most of us struggle with growth and the concept of growth because we feel unworthy. I'm just going to let the Holy Ghost do his thing this morning. We struggle with growth because somehow or another we think that we have to contribute to it. We think somehow or another that if I pray enough that God will cause me to grow. If I give enough, if I do enough, if I'm, at, if I'm present enough, God will somehow or another cause me to grow. It is not in any of those things that God needs, that, that combination of particular things to cause you to grow. But rather, God looks at the heart of a man or a woman and accepts them where they are and says, listen, if you are a bum on the street, I can use you. If you are a crack addict, I can use you. If you've had more problems and more failures than success, I can use you. Because it is not in who you are, but rather in who I am, the Lord says. <laughs> Woo, I tell you what, I sense the presence of God. See, small crowds actually, they, they help a lot because, you know, you, you, you don't have to kind of, you know what I'm saying, you don't have to live up to anything. And so isn't it good that each one of us comes from a background that we have nothing to offer God other than our love and our obedience? Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. So with that, he says, he says, I have planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God is the one who made it grow. And so the one who plants is not important. I feel God this morning. I'm just enjoying that. The one who plants is not important. Well, you know, I went to Harvard, not important. I was a part of Dr. Savell's ministry, not important. <laughs> None of that is significant. Because ultimately, if we try to attribute our success or our growth or our destiny to things that are external, then we pull the, the glory of God from it and somehow or another cheapen it and lessen it and make it somehow or another attributable to man. Isn't that right? So he goes on to say, he says, he says, and the one who waters is not important, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have the same purpose. And each will be rewarded or receive wages for his own work. Verse nine, we are God's workers working together, co-workers belonging to God, co-workers in God's service. You are God's farm. <laughs> I know you don't want to be manure on a farm and a seed on a farm, but you are God's farm. You are God's field or God's building. Let's read that, that same verse, same passage from the North, uh, New Living Translation. He says, I planted the seed in your, own, in your hearts. Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is, is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters are the same. Amen. They work together with the same purpose and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. For we are both God's workers and you are God's field. You are God's building. We talked last week about being God's workmanship. You can find that over in Ephesians 2 verse 10. We talked about that last week. You are God's workmanship. Amen. I've got some pictures. Do you have the pictures up there? Do you have the pictures for me? Should be uh, three pictures, but I want the second one if I could, please. I used these last week. I want you to look at this for a minute. Hallelujah. Say amen. amen. Say hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. These pictures that you're going to see are just pictures of three trees. There's one, one tree. If they get them up there, there's one tree. One tree is just that. It is one tree. How many of you remember from last week? Yes. Amen. So there's one tree that comes up, and the one tree that's there is a tree that shows a tree with fruit. Amen. There we go. The lights aren't down, but you can see that. I'm going to walk this way just a little bit just to... to, to help make it a little bit clearer. I think I can walk over here without it squealing. What you can't see, maybe because it's too, is you see the tree, right? Yeah. Now, those of you that weren't here, I mean, excuse me, that were here last week, don't answer, okay? If you were here last week, don't answer. Y'all got that? Yes. What do you see here? You were here last week. I said don't answer. 
There's one in every crowd. I'm just kidding. All right. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. How much of this is the tree? I heard somebody say it. All of it. Isn't that right? You've got what? Fruit? Say fruit. You have leaves. What's underneath the leaves? Limbs. You've got limbs. You've got what? A trunk, right? And right here, don't forget this part because this is important. What is that? No, what is this above the roots? It's land. It's soil. It's dirt, right? It's earth. And then you have roots. Okay. All of that is the tree, right? Now, with that being the tree, if you see, if you walk up on the tree, not having seen, have, having had visibility of the lower portion, you might think that all, you, all that is the tree or represented by the tree is just the leaves and the fruit and the trunk, right? Is that true? No. Because ultimately, the greatest part of the tree is what? Is the roots. And so being rooted and being, because the nourishment comes from where? The roots. I said this last week. Somebody got ahead of me, and I said this last week. Now, I'm going to jump up here one more time, or I'm going to step up here. Is this significant, this area? What? Yes. Yes. Absolutely it is. And I'm going to talk about that today a little bit. <sighs> Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Spirit. Okay. Hmm. The Bible says that we are his workmanship. I told you that, right? Ephesians 2.10. The fruit of the Spirit, you need to write this down. The fruit of the Spirit in Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit was complete in Jesus. Was it not? It was. Thank you. I got one yes out of a room of 40 people. Thank you. I appreciate that. The fruit of the Spirit was complete in Jesus, for he had the Spirit without measure. That's important. <laughs> OK, let's do a little pop quiz. Do we have the spirit without measure? How many would say yes? Lift your hands, please. You got, you got to own up to you. You got to own up to your answer. OK. Yes. All right. How many would say no? Not yet. Lift your hands. Reverend Butler, I'm going to make you raise your hand one way or another. <laughs> I would tell you that the, 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 you have the spirit as much as you want which may not be without measure. Let me say it again. I ain't getting no amens and nothing on that. You have the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, as a born-again person, as much as you want. You are the one that puts the measure on it, not God. Jesus received the fruit of the spirit, or the spirit without measure. Why? Because he was God. It's just too simple. That's why you're not saying nothing. Right. He was God. And because he was God, the Bible lets us know that he emptied himself of all divine privilege. OK, so what did he do? He's he I just we we're just reading this yesterday. We did some taping on some some segments. But the Bible says that he he emptied himself and he became obedient unto death. That's what we talk about today a little bit. OK, even the death of the cross. In other words, as a, as a living savior, as a deity, no force on the earth at the time that he was alive or, or before or after could kill him. He had to kill himself. I feel like I'm putting you out of sleep this morning. He had to kill himself. He, in other words, and he says to, to, to the, the high priest of the day, he says, no man takes my life. I lay it down. Can I tell you today that nobody's going to take your life? Amen. You got to lay it down. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to die today? Yes. Yes. Well, you know, if I had said that without the opening, you might think I was talking about die physically. And many of you would say, I ain't ready to die yet. You know, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. <laughs> With my name on it. Right. I, I want to see my name on it before I die, Pastor. I'm just saying. But see, the way to get the blessing is to die before you see it. Amen. So with that being said, now when you look at this, well, they put the, took the tree down. But when you look at that, I want you to, and the little kernel, I want you to see that each one of those elements is significant to its, to its growth. So I told you that the fruit of the Spirit was complete in Jesus, for he had the Spirit without measure. 
He released the potential for this fruit to grow in us. When he told his disciples, henceforth, you shall ask nothing in my name. And then he also said, it is expedient that I go. Right? You remember him saying that? You find that over in John 3.34. If you didn't get all that, you can just go to John 3.34. That's where I got it from. Okay? So, let's move forward. <laughs> Turn to Matthew 13 for me, please. Matthew 13. Where am I out of my time? Matthew 13. Thank you, Jesus. Are you all right? Y'all quiet this morning? Y'all missing your side buddy, whoever sits next to you today? <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Matthew 13. I'm going to skip through this, but I want to read a couple verses for you. We're going to begin at verse 3. If you have a say, man. Matthew 13, verse 3. We live in a society, ladies and gentlemen, that um, the word of God has lost its importance and significance to a lot of people. This church, as long as I'm at the helm of it, by God's grace, will not do that. Amen. I don't care how unpopular it gets. I'm going to tell you from the word. My wife is going to tell you from the word. That's all we know. We don't know anything else. Amen. Anybody that stands up here before you is going to tell you from the word. Matthew 13, verse 3. It says, then Jesus used stories or parables to teach them many things. He said, here's what he said. Now, look at me for a minute. Keep this thought in mind. Jesus said, listen, oh, hallelujah. The kingdom of heaven is like. He did not say the kingdom of heaven is. That's very important to what I'm getting ready to read you right now, okay? He says, then Jesus used stories, parables to teach them many things. He said, a farmer or a sower, you know it, sower, soweth the word, so on and so forth. A farmer went out to plant his seed. Verse 4, while he was planting or sowing, some seed fell by the road or along the path, and the birds came and ate it all up. Verse 5, some seed fell on rocky ground where there wasn't much dirt. That seed grew, didn't have much dirt. Make note of that, okay? That seed grew, sprang up very fast because the ground was not deep. Verse 6, but when the sun rose, the sun was there. Amen. The sun rose, the plants dried up, or they were scorched and withered because they did not have deep roots. Remember how I told you about your roots, right? Verse 7, some other seed fell among thorny weeds, which grew and choked the good plants. Verse 8, some other seed fell on good ground. Say good ground. Good ground. Say I am. I am. Good, ground. good ground. Turn to your neighbor and say you are. You are. Good, ground. good ground. Say we are. We are. Good, ground. good ground. You got to know this. Yes. Amen. Where it grew, see, when it hits good ground, it grows and produced a crop, right, or grain. Some plants made a hundred times more. That's me. That's me. I'm one of those. That's me. Some made 60 times more. I ain't got nothing to say with that one because that ain't me. Some people are okay with 60. I'm not. I want a hundred times more. Right? He goes on to say, and some made 30 times more. Nothing wrong with 30, 60, but I'll take the 100. Thank you very much. Yeah. Verse 9, let those with ears, do you have ears? Yeah. Do you have spiritual ears? Yeah. Amen. More important than the natural. Use them and listen. The one who has ears to hear, let him or let them hear. Uh-huh. Write down as a scripture reference, Proverbs 4 and 23. Mm-hmm. And also Isaiah 61 and 3. We went through those last week. I'm not going to go through those again. Write those down. Isaiah 61 and 3, Proverbs 4 and 23. I told you last week about Joseph, didn't I? About Joseph being planted. Joseph was a guy who was planted in where? In Egypt. He's planted in Egypt. Where are you planted? Iowa City Island. Iowa City Island. Even if you're only here temporarily. Come on now. <clears throat> Let me do this. Let me see if I can do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to embarrass anybody. I don't want to put anybody on the spot. If you don't want to answer, that's fine. I was just driving today. I dropped my wife off this morning, and I was hungry because I didn't eat last night. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I don't typically eat before I come in here, but I did this morning. As I was driving up, you know, down here to get a little breakfast sandwich, uh, the Lord reminded me. He said two things to me. He said, one, I told you years ago that this is your wealthy place. I received that. Thank you very much. We always want to receive the wealthy place. 
He also told me, he said, do you realize that you've been here almost 10 years? And that I had lost really sight of. I hadn't really thought about it. Positive, negative, I hadn't thought about it. Okay? But what he was telling me that for was for right here. Where you are is where God has planted you. No matter if it's long or short. Some people say, well, I've been in Iowa City all my life. Celebrate it. There's a lot to be said for that. Amen. I wish I could get some amens this morning. Are you hearing me? So you might only be here for a season. Celebrate it. Because it, was where, it is where God has you. Okay? No matter where you are, I heard, uh, matter of fact, Nancy Dufresne was talking about it. Remember, we were over there a few weeks ago. Nancy Dufresne. If you've never heard Nancy Dufresne, you need to go that woman. That is a bad somebody. She's a bad woman. I mean, bad in the best, best of, best of sense. You know. <laughs> okay. But she was, she was saying this something along those lines that wherever. See, see, this is this is the best place to be if you live in Iowa City, Iowa, Corville, Iowa. Let me talk to the camera for a minute. If you live in Corville, Iowa City, Iowa, or the surrounding areas, and you're just hanging out at home and you ain't doing nothing, this is the best place to be in the town. Amen. Not because I'm saying it, but because the power of God is here. I am teaching stuff that God gives for his people to receive. And all these, these seeds that you see around are growing up into trees of righteousness. And they will affect your life one day. You might be working for them one day. I'm just saying. Amen. Uh, okay, don't get me started now. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me this morning. Yeah, amen. <laughs> so so he, he, he goes on to say, here's, here's where Jesus picks up. Here's what Jesus picks up. He said the kingdom of heaven is light. Verse, verse, uh, let's skip down to verse 24. Same, same Matthew 13. I'm going to keep going. When God planted Joseph, he planted Joseph because he had a plan for Joseph's life. Hmm. 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 The phone call you got this morning is because the spirit of fruitfulness has hit your life. The phone call you got this morning or the text there, what you mentioned, it's because the spirit of fruitfulness has hit your life. And it hits your life because of the choices that you've made. And you've made choices that are not popular. But God has seen the choices. He's really orchestrated the choices and you've just yielded. But don't stop now because he's got more on the other side of this. Show me the second picture. The second picture is your life. When you can, put that second picture up there. That's your life. That's all of our lives. You can receive that too. But I hear the prophetic word for you. <laughs> Just little drops of, of seed on the ground. The Lord has covered and kept from the birds and the fowls of the air and allowed them to begin to sprout. I hear the Lord this morning. First the blade, <laughs> then the ear. You can't get the, the ear without the blade. Then the full corn in the ear. So, so rest. <laughs> rest and know that I am God. That second picture. And then the third is a, is, is a fruitful field. Thank you, Master. Lift your hands to the Lord this morning. Come on, just lift your hands. Let's pause. I don't want to get in a hurry. Father, we just delight. <laughs> ah, Father, we thank you. I give you praise. I bless your name. We worship you, Master. You are the Master. You are the teacher. You are the head of the church. It is your church. <laughs> we welcome your presence in this place this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Verse 24, Matthew 13, 24. Then Jesus told them another story. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who planted good seed in his field. Verse 25. That night when everyone was asleep, his enemy came and planted weeds. So we have two plantings going on. Do you see that? Yeah. Can I tell you, look up at me for a minute, that your life is really consists of two plantings. Yeah. Each one of our lives consists of two plantings. There was a time in your life before you got born again that you lived unto yourself, even if you did it as a baby. 
You lived unto yourself and you were planting and the world system was planting in you things that you didn't even realize were happening. It's, it's what causes you to like the things that you like. Right? And then what happened is you came across the word of God because you can't get born again without hearing the word of God. You heard the word of God. And when you heard the word of God, a new planting began. This is what Jesus is saying right now. And in his in this new planting, this new season, this new season takes a lifetime. It doesn't just take one moment. And now you have uh, gravitated. <clears throat> excuse me. You have gravitated to the new planting more than the old planting. And the new planting is starting to grow. But the weeds are right there. Yes. And what the weeds do. Stand up, honey, for a minute, please. The, what the weeds do. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. The weeds, as she's growing as a vine, she's, she's abiding in the vine. She is a tree of righteousness. Turn around and face the audience for me because I'm going to do it from the backside. I'm grabbing the backside of her blouse, but the weeds are right here always trying to pull her back into what she once knew. The weeds are trying to cause her to be what she once was. Huh? And so if she yields to that, the only way that these this this pull of the weeds can overcome her is if she stops allowing what God is doing in her life to continue. Many people don't 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 throw stones. Don't get mad at me this morning. Many people have not figured this simple concept out. They think they have more to do with it than they actually do. What you and I have to do is simply yield. As a farmer, as a farmer, I'm talking to you now, you were looking for what from your field? You were looking for yield. Isn't that right? Yield is the amount that you get out of the planting that you put in. Am I right about that? So what happens is Jesus says this now, and I'm saying it to you. You are now your growth and your, your uh, uh, strength, your uh, uh, success, your prosperity, your healing, your victory, your love walk, your long suffering, your joy, your peace. All of those things are a result. And you're getting those things based on what you have planted and allowed to grow up in the kingdom. And the enemy, we read this over a few minutes ago, over in 2 Timothy, the Bible says that there's a form of godliness. Yes. Yes. A form of godliness looks like I show up whenever I want to. A form of godliness says I pray when I want to, not when the Holy Spirit leads me to. A form of godliness says that, you know what, it's all about the external expression instead of, instead of the internal reality. God, help me this morning. I, are you hearing me? So, so what happens is those things, the Bible says that bodily, bodily exercise profiteth little. You might get a little profit, but you're not going to get the yield of, the, of what God intends for you until you allow yourself to fall into the planting and what God's, what God's design for your life is. You just simply, look, just, just call me dead. I'm a dead man walking. I, I, I am dead to the world, alive to Christ. He, wa he wants me to, he says, listen, I want you to go here. And I don't want to go there, but, but my life is not my own. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Okay, let, let's keep going. What verse I leave you off at? Anybody know? 25? 25. 25 says that night when everyone was asleep, his enemy came and planted weeds, right? A weed here is a noxious weed that looks like wheat among the wheat. And then he left. And verse 20, 26 says later the wheat sprouted. Wheat, you know, it sprouted and the heads of grain grew, but the weeds also grew. Verse 27, then the man's servants came to him and said, Master, you planted what? Good seed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? The weeds always come from the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I'm going to be very cautious here, but I'm going to be very truthful because I think you, you guys are mature enough to get this. I like football. I'm, I like basketball. I'm better, more basketball than I am football. But do you know that that God, which is basketball driven, and even, anytime there's money involved, there's, there's a God there. Yes, 
Even if you ain't getting none of it, it's still a God there. You and I. If I'm not careful, that God can grow up as a weed and choke off the seed of the word of God. I'm going to use another one because y'all can handle this. Say, I can handle it. Say, I can handle it. Your job can be a weed. And that pursuit of promotion, recognition, and achievement, if it chokes off the word of God, it is not good for your life. Amen. 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 Right? Yes. Okay. So he says some plants made a hundred times. Oh, excuse me. I'm skipping down. He, he, he says in verse 30, 30, 29, the man answered, no, because when you pull up the weed, because they said, well, should we pull all of it up? He said, no. You might also pull up the wheat. Yeah. Verse 30, very familiar passage of scripture. Let the weeds. And who's talking here? Who's talking? Jesus, Jesus is talking. Let the weeds and the wheat both grow together until the harvest time. Harvest time, I will tell the workers or the reapers, the angels, say angels. angels. He will say to them, first gather the weeds and tie them together in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. Mm. Glory to God. Verse 31, that Jesus told them another story. And I'm not going to go into that, but kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. And I tried to find some mustard seed, but we couldn't find any mustard seed. Mandy said she had some mustard seed, but I didn't ask Mandy. So anyway. <laughs> Now, turn to 1 Corinthians 3. I'm almost finished. Are you all right? Yes. Look at my baby grandson. <laughs> he's a whole, he's a champ. He's a real trooper. Barely notice he's here. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> I'm telling you, God is taking you somewhere. I mean, you, you got to make the commitment to go. I can't go there for you. I can't get you there. I can't pull you. I can't drag you. It doesn't work like that. Um, I'm going to tell on, I went fishing with a few, I went catching, but there were some people fishing with me a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. And one of them sitting in the room, and she said she caught like six fish. I don't know. I didn't stand there and count, so I don't know how many she caught. But she said she caught like six fish. I asked her during the meet and greet, but she caught more than me. I will say that. So I'll give her credit for that. But there is always a next time. Say amen to that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> First Corinthians 3, verse 6. I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. It says, I planted the seed in your hearts. Apollos watered it. I want you to read this again. I'm saying it again on purpose. Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. Verse 7, it's not important who does the planting. This is from the New Living Translation, right? Or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose, and both will be rewarded for their own hard work. Say amen. amen. I've read that twice to you. Have I not? Yes. Okay. Now, with that being said, who is responsible for your growth? One says God, one says we. I'm going to tell you. We've heard for years that it's us. You can't make yourself grow. I wish I had a preacher in here that would help me. You can't make yourself grow. How do I know that? You know how I know that? Matthew 6, Jesus said what? He said, why do you take one thought for your own stature? You can't add one cubit or one inch to your own growth process. Huh? Physically, I'm talking about. So what then happens? What mirrors the physical is the same as the spiritual. What you do, you can't make yourself grow. All you can do is open yourself up for growth. The seed, when it, gets, when it gets in the ground, doesn't make itself grow. God does that. So what happens is, whether the, we, we th and see, that's, this is the mentality that we have, and this is what causes most people not to grow. Because they start feeling like, well, I didn't, haven't done what I'm supposed to do. I haven't prayed enough, Mike. I haven't prayed enough. I haven't prayed enough. I haven't prayed enough. Well, what is enough? What is enough? I'm oh, see, it's going quiet in here. I, I haven't given enough, Mandy. I haven't given enough. Well, what is enough? How can you determine what is enough? No, what I'm telling you is that, yes, do I have a responsibility? Absolutely. But my responsibility is to die. In other words, if I feel like going to, 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 to do this, but God says do this, I go do what God says. And in the process, what is he doing? He's causing me to grow. I can't make it no more simple than that. I don't, I don't know what else to do. But we've heard, 
Well, you know, the more you pray. I know people that pray. I know people. She and I know people that they're that all they do is pray. And they're no better off than they were when they started. I know this ain't a popular church message. I get that. I, for those of you tuning in, I'm not trying to be popular. I'm telling you the truth. But you see, because the Bible says, the word of God says it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He, in other words, he comes along. Stand up about that. He comes along. Come over here because I don't want to squeal. He comes along and he says, listen, I'm giving you my son. You receive him. You are born again. You say Amen. You're born again, you receive the new nature, and now it is my responsibility to place in you, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. It does not say that Dave gives the increase. So what are you responsible for? Being in the place to receive what God can do in planting and what one can do in watering. And God will pour out his self in you and cause you to grow as long as you stay obedient. I, it, I envisioned that going over a little bit better when I was studying it yesterday. I don't know. But see how we want to gravitate to what we do? You can't add to your righteousness. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Okay, I better keep going. I got two more scriptures. Y'all okay? Yeah. Turn to John 15. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it lay with you and you can take it and marinate it and do whatever you want. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, Pastor, what, 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 what am I supposed to do? Die. Just die. When, when, it becomes, when it becomes a choice between what you want and what God wants, you should have no, this, should, this shouldn't, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. Right. Yep. Hmm. Now, I'm not getting, and somebody said, I can hear this in my spirit, that's why I'm pausing. Well, that gives people license to sin. As we've heard time and time again, you don't need no license to do that, you're going to sin anyway. <laughs> you don't need a license to do anything. You don't need permission, you're adults. You made a choice this morning. Our life consists of everyday choices, moment by moment choices. If I stand up here and I walk out and I walk right past Roger, knowing that I have fellowship with Roger and I choose not to speak to him, I have chosen not to speak to him. And then he has to deal with my my choice causes another choice in him. Huh? So so what should I do? I, you know, now we're going to walk by people all the time. And now that's just my, my illustration here. But my fellowship or my my deep rooting, my roots that run through. We talked about this last week. My roots run through Roger's roots. Yes. Roger's roots run through me. So I am affected when I come up to Roger and, and I choose to ignore or choose to override. The Holy Spirit says, give Roger a hug and I don't do it. Then I have overridden the Holy Ghost. Yes. See how simple that is? Yes. And it will have an impact or effect on my brother and my sister. Yes. And churches do it all the time. Yep. People in churches do it all the time. Right. Not, not that you walk by somebody don't speak, but, but you have to understand that, that it, like I said last week, if I choose, you know, hey, listen, because I'd have to make the choice to do this. You know what, honey? Let's go. Let's move on down to Florida and take our ministry down there. And we just shutter the shop and, and close up Life Point, Iowa. No. I'd have to make that choice. And I'd have to override the Holy Ghost. Right. Are you hearing me? Yeah. But it is definitely going to have an impact or effect on anybody that's, whose roots cross through mine. Yes. And what you do does affect other people. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. That's why suicide is so sad. Yes. What you do to yourself does affect other people. Yes. All right. I, I left you John 15, did I not? Verse 13, verse 13 says, the greatest love a person can show is to die for his friends. Is Jesus talking about mortal death? No. He's talking about a surrender of the will for the necessity of others to grow in Christ or in him. So when I stand up, I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you think about how I'm dressed. I don't care what you think about whether or not I have enough degrees to speak to you. I don't care what you think about whether or not I went to the right school, whether I'm married to the right woman. I don't care what you think about what I drive. I don't care about what you think about me being a hotel. I do not care because I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing it for Christ. That's all. 
That's it. And if somebody can make it into the kingdom because I opened my mouth without an education, without 12 degrees, then bless God, to God be the glory. Lay down one's life, he says, for one's friends. Jesus' death is the ultimate expression of that principle. That's John 15, 13. Last scripture I have for you. John 12. You know this one. I've been talking about it all year. John 12, 24. It has been a hallmark of my, of my life. It has been a, 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 a benchmark. John 12. Not even knowing the significance or the value of it when I first read it in the scriptures. But it has been a true indicator of how I have chosen to live my life. My wife and I both. John 12, verse 24. Jesus is speaking again. I tell you the truth. In other words, I ain't lying here. Truly, I say unto you, or verily, verily, in King James Version, it says, a grain of wheat must fall to the ground and die to make many seeds. Glory to God. Or much fruit. He says, but if it never dies, in other words, the choice is not, it's not with God whether or not you, you grow. It is God's responsibility to make you grow. In the sense, his power is resident in the, uh, in the spirit realm, in the natural realm. The power of God is here to heal, to deliver, to take you from being broke to prosperous, to take you from being sick to, to, to healthy. It's here. But he is not simply going to do anything unless you die. What does it mean to die, Pastor? It means to stop thinking, well, you got a better way. The doctor doesn't have a better way to get you healed than Jesus. You can't, you can't put enough in a portfolio or a 401k to outgive God in his blessing program for you. And so many people think, well, you know, I just, oh, well, I just chose not to do it today. I just chose not to do it today. I just chose to do something else. You have, you have chosen to live instead of dying. And ultimately, the, the lack of success in your life is not on God. It is squarely at your shoulders. I ain't trying to, I'm not trying to, I'm not mad at you. I'm not trying. <laughs> Do you see it? it we've, 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 we've danced and paraded around it. God, people would say, I want a revival. A revival is not, a revival means, oh, thank you, Lord. A revival means that, you know what, something that's dead has to be brought back to life. You and I, in our death, we're not dead. We are alive to Christ. And the power of God is there. When I go to the grave, the, the psalmist said, thou art with me. When I take wings as an eagle, thou art with me. No matter if I lay down at my uprising, at my down sitting, you are with me. God, is, ladies and gentlemen, as believers, God is always with you. He can never not be with you. And so because his presence is there, hallelujah, in his presence, the Bible says fullness of joy. But rather than me struggling with the decision of the moment, God it goes back to the very simple thing that we heard years ago. What would Jesus do? Jesus would simply say, yes, Lord, thy will be done. But if it never dies, it remains only a single seed. Verse 25, those who love their lives will lose them. But those who hate their lives in this world will keep true life forever. Can I, I'm, I'm going I'm I'm to make a, a huge assumption here and say every one of you hate your life in this world. You hate it. You hate it. You hate sickness and disease. You hate not having enough to send a missionary all the way around the world. You hate not having enough to buy a jet plane for a preacher that needs to take the gospel to the... You hate it not having all of your... You hate it. Doesn't mean that you hate yourself. It means that you simply realize that the life that you live now, my God, God, I just give it to... I surrender. Glory to God. Let me conclude. I asked at the beginning um, for the helps ministry to give out several cards. When I call that card up, I want you to hold it up, but I want you to stand. Okay? I need the picture up. Can I have the picture? The first picture. I'm going to conclude with this.
when you see Pastor Lynette and myself, I don't care what, what venue you see us in, wherever you see us, we've lived our lives to be the same no matter when you see us. If I am in, let's say I'm in New York somewhere, my home state, and for some reason we both be, just happen to be walking down Times Square, I don't want you to see another Tommy Roberts. I want you to see the same one that stands up here before you on Sunday. Amen. I want, I, my, if I can speak to you in here, dear God, <laughs> I need to be running to you out there. <laughs> right? So, so with that being said, that does not diminish or negate the challenges that we face to be in New York City. Unless I miss my guess, and you know, like let's say we need to be in New York City on tomorrow. Well, there are only a couple of ways to get there. <laughs> we don't have to overcome some things to get there by tomorrow, right? And so are you. You have had to overcome some things to get where you are right now. What did you have to overcome this morning? Think about it. You don't think about it because it's just part of life. You just you just chalk it up for part of life. Okay, this picture's up here. Can I, can, I, can I ask you again what you see? What do you see? What is this? Okay, what is this? We see the tree. What is this? Atmosphere. atmosphere. Very good. What does the atmosphere consist of? Air. Air? What else? Okay, let me stop you there. There are micronutrients and macronutrients. I'm not a, I'm not a biologist by any means. I'm not trying to take you back to science class, but can you agree with that? There are both micro and macronutrients, things that cannot be seen, things that can be seen. Okay? Now, let's deal with some of the things that can be seen. For example, okay? who's got water? Stand up, please, if you would. Is water, is water a necessary nutrient in the growth of any seed? Yes. You agree with that, right? Yes. You represent water. Stand, stay, stay standing for me. Okay? You got your seed? Who's got a seed? Who's got their seeds close by? Who's got their seed close by? Anybody? Who's got it? All right, you're too close, though. <laughs> I need somebody on this side. Who's got their seed? Yeah. <laughs> you got your seed? You got your seed? Okay. Ty's got his seed. Just hold it up. Can he grow without her? No. Anybody say that he can grow without her because she represents water? Anybody say you can? No. Can't. I didn't say cook in hot oil. I said grow. <laughs> okay, stay there, stay there. Okay, there's something else here, all right? Right, there's something else. So we, we get water. Now, water many times is where? Not just here, up here, okay? So what is this? Who's got soil? Stand up, please, stand up. There's soil, okay? Soil is a necessary component for the seed to grow. Didn't Jesus say that? John 12, 24, he said over, we read over in 1 Corinthians, Paul said, I have planted, Apollos did what? Water. water, okay, we see that? So we got soil and water, you got the seed, hold it up, okay, next one. Now the soil, what, what the soil does, I was standing and talking to somebody the other night, uh, we were just talking in general, you know what soil does? I, I hadn't really thought about it this way, but it does. You know what soil does? What does soil, now it provides the, you know, a lot of micronutrients are in the soil, would you agree with that? Okay, macro too. But what else is happening here with this soil? Protection's a good one. I didn't think about that, but that's a good one. What else is it doing? It's doing that too, but what else is it doing without even thinking about it? What am I doing when I do this? I'm putting pressure. God help me. The Bible says that the trying of your faith causes you to grow in patience. So what happens is the soil puts pressure on the seed. You can't just, as a farmer, Jesus said it over, over, we just read over Matthew 13, but you can't just throw the seed on the top of the soil, can you? You got to dig a hole and put that joker in there. And then you got to cover it up. And what happens? That pressure releases something out of you and I that only God can bring out. Help me, God. So when you get in a tight situation, you think, oh, it's so, oh, why is this coming against me? Because the pressure is not being allowed by God to get you to look like the fruit that you need to be. Okay, there's something else here. What else is here? We can't see it, but what's here? Who said it? Somebody said it. Sorry. 
Who's got sun? Anybody got sun? Stand up. Oh, you got the seed and the sun. Okay, you got both. <laughs> All right. The sun is a necessary component to your and I's growth. Remember what Jesus, what the Bible said about Jesus said that he is called the what? Son of righteousness. The son of righteousness. He's also the son of God, surely. But, but, but the Bible says that he has healing in his wings. In other words, the sun represents the heat of life. How many times have you been in a situation you just can't explain why you're there? And it feels like it's going to overcome you and you just feel overwhelmed and you just want to give up. You want to quit. It's just hot. It's tired. I'm just tired. I'm just tired. And you want to have a pity party. You want to shut down and you want to call somebody and say, well, you know, oh, woe is me. Well, that's representative of the sun. But the sun brings out of you and the heat of challenges brings out of you only that which God knows is in you. And you can't, you can't always run into the shade. you got to allow the sun. The seed has to allow the sun to, to scorch it, to open it up. See, what the sun does is it causes such a reaction between the soil and the water that it begins to open. And you thought you were just coming to church. You thought you were just born again. Where's the air? Stand up. We got the air. Got to have the air. Got to have the, the Right? The oxygen, hydrogen is in there, right? Other nutrients that cannot be seen to the naked eye. But see, the air, and, 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 and to me, to me, to me, to me, I'm not trying to be over spiritual, but the air is like representative of the Holy Ghost. God help me. Who just comes and he's, 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 he's swirling. When I'm in a heat or, or in, a, in a hard, hot situation, the wind of the Holy Ghost, like he came in on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God comes in and it cools me down a little bit and it keeps the earth from overwhelming me and it draws the water and it allows me to be able to be what God called me to be. Right? That's the air. There's one more. I got this one because I didn't want anybody to say, I don't want that. Can, you, can I tell you what Jesus said? Except you and I allow ourselves to go into the soil of the kingdom and to be planted. Now, I've, I learned this a long time ago, a long time ago. I studied this years and years ago. What a seed actually does, that little kernel of corn, I don't have my name in my hand, but that little kernel of corn, it, when it goes into the ground, it transforms. There's a metamorphosis that takes place. It begins to shed that outer shell. And you and I are no different. When we go into the plant ourselves into the kingdom of God, I know what we used to look like. But what we look like now has, looks nothing like who we used to be. Originally, I went in like this, but I came out like this. I went, in, I went in looking like a liar and a whoremonger and, a, and, and promiscuous and, and, and uh, I did all these do dirty. But my God, when I went into the soil with the air huh, and the sun and the soil and the water of God and I allowed myself to die, I came up looking like the master. I came up looking like Jesus. I know it's not popular to say that, but my God, I am his son. Hallelujah. Mm, <laughs> Sit down. I look like him. I know they don't like you. I know, I know they don't really care about you as a person. But this is not about you and I as a person. It is about the king and the master and the summons of the Holy Ghost. And when he called you into his kingdom, he said, listen, be fruitful and multiply. And bring forth much fruit. Hallelujah. There is no reason for an orange tree. To be jealous of a lemon tree. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Apple tree ain't got nothing on the plum tree. Because all the apple tree is doing what it's called to do. Wake up one day. See the sun. Receive the air. Let the water come in the soil. Just stay planted. My God. And somehow or another, whatever God wants to do with the apple tree, apple trees just put forth apples. You and I put forth God's glory. All I got to do is tell Mandy, God loves you. I don't feel lovely. Doesn't matter how you feel, darling. God loves you. But I'm not perfect. He don't need you to be perfect. He needs you to believe that he loves you. He don't need you to think somehow, now I've made too many mistakes. His grace is greater than your mistakes. My God, he got enough grace for all the mistakes you can make in a lifetime. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, yeah, you've done some things that just are not very popular and not very pretty. But God don't care about that. Only religious people care about that. All you got to do is just come. Listen, all I do is plant myself in the kingdom of God. I don't care who walks on me. I don't care who lies on me. I don't care who tells these things and says, scandalizes my name, so to speak. I am God's child and watch me bloom. Ha. Thank you, Father. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I think of the Moravians. Remember the first time I ever heard of the story of the Moravians that sold themselves into slavery? And I thought, what a remarkable story. And then I thought about, would I, Tommy Roberts, be willing to do the same thing? If you haven't heard of it and you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go research it. It's popular, common knowledge. These two gentlemen believed that they were called by God to save slaves who were being traded, bought and sold. And there was no way for them to reach them, but they believed they'd heard from God. Now, and in hearing from God, they came up against a tremendous and difficult choice. How do we carry out the will of God in a society that will not accept us into, we can't be slaves. These were, these were Europeans. So they were not people of color, but they were called to save people of color or at least take the message to them. And then in prayer, and I'm simplifying it obviously, the Lord said, become them, be them. I'm here to tell you, I, 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 don't, I don't have the answer to things that, that God doesn't reveal to me. I don't have the answer. Somebody would ask me, well, why, why doesn't this happen? Why doesn't, I don't know. But I do know this, that I'm called to be you. God calls me to be you. Doesn't mean that I have to live in your house and live in your body. But it does mean that I have to be willing to supply my life yes. for your nourishment. Not as a pastor. Listen to me well. Not as a pastor. Too many people confuse that. It's the pastor's responsibility. It's the pastor's wife, or in this case, pastor. It's the pastor's responsibility to do that. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's all of ours. I was going to nursing homes before I became a pastor. When I first got born again, the message was, I mean, good Lord, are you kidding me? <laughs> I've been living like this all my life and I can live like this? I want everybody to know that. Yeah. And there was no place, I wasn't called, quote unquote, to be a pastor at that time. I was, but I didn't know it. I wasn't called to go uh, uh, run to Africa or Asia or anything like that. The Lord called me to go to a nursing home. And that's what we did. Thank you. Nobody knew it. There was no glamour. There was, no, there, was, there was nothing there other than the obedience of God. Listen to me well. Yes. But I know, I know that the roots of our life were just beginning to be planted. The seedlings were just beginning to be planted. And so what were we trying to do? We were just trying to let the growth come from us to her and from her to whoever she was going to touch and so on and so forth. And we've lost that in our churches because we want the spectacular, the supernatural, but the supernatural happens when one life at a time. Amen. Amen? So look this week, I challenge you, look this week, how can I? <laughs> Woo. How can I simply affect change in somebody else? regardless of whether they look like you want them to look, smell like you want them to smell, or sound like you want them to sound like. Who can you touch? Will you, and each one of us, will you be planted into wherever you work at? I don't want to say a name. Wherever you work at, will you, will you be planted there? You know, I, I, my friend Ty here drives a truck. 
And it might be a case in which I has to get out of the truck, out of his own, it's inconvenient for him to get out of the truck, but it is necessary because God wants to touch somebody else's life. That's what this is about. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing more. We come on Sundays, we lift our hands, we worship, we cry out unto him, we, we just pray, we give. All of that is good, but this has nothing to do with anything other than our simple surrender. Lord, thy will be done on heaven as it is in earth. Or in earth as it is in heaven, excuse me. The Moravians figured that out. They sold themselves into slavery and got a whole nation and continent born again. Think about that. Two white dudes... <laughs> sold into slavery by their own choice they choose to be slaves so they can minister to brothers that really they have no earthly gain for joseph was planted in egypt moses i told you this last week uh, uh, uh who else did i use abraham right yeah lord i hear you and, and, and then 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 i think about esther you know the Lord said this scripture to me just now, Romans 4, 16, 17. It is God who quickens the dead. Help me, Lord. Yes, Lord. It is God who quickens the dead. Say that with me. It is God who quickens the dead. The Bible, when it talks about quickening, it means make alive. See that little thing? It's dead. That's you and I. That's you and I. We're dead. We're dead to ourselves. We're dead to our own desires. We're dead. We're dead. We're dead. We're dead. We're dead. We're dead. I'm dead. I'm a dead man. I'm a dead man. I'm a dead man. The Apostle Paul said that. I don't know why y'all. I'm a dead man. But God is quickening me. He's making me alive. He's making you alive. Making you alive. And the Bible says it is God that quickens the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. Crystal, you are an evangelist even though you don't know it. Help me, Lord. Huh? Glory to God. Huh? Herbert? You are a prophet of the Most High God, even though you don't know it. Amber, you are a messenger of the Most High. He's quickening the dead things of your life to bring about his will so that the fruit of God would remain. Roger, glory to God, entrepreneur, but you are a king's priest. Help me, Lord. Both a king and a priest in the kingdom of glory. Come on, are you seeing that? Say this with me today. Father, Father. <laughs> It is my pleasure to die to myself that Christ would live in me. Father, let the fruit of my death be seen on such a scale that the world can only recognize that Jesus is in me. Make me famous. Oh, uh, see, y'all balked. Choke point. See? See? You see? You're not famous for you. You're famous for him. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to give you a second try. Make me famous for you so that you would receive the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen.